Hi there. I know that drafting the roof framing plan of a shed roof is no easy task. It's quite challenging. I believe this video guide will help you in the process of drafting the roof framing plan of a shed roof. So bear with me. Here are the four steps in drafting the roof framing plan of the shed roof. We'll start with step number one. This is the first step of drafting the roof framing plan of your shed roof. The first thing that you're going to do is to draw the columns and roof beams outlining the perimeter of the house and to find the arc line to represent the outline of the roof at one meter away from the center of the columns or roof beams. These are the roof beams outlining the perimeter of the house. These roof beams in this case measures 0.15. In your drawing, you will have it 1.5 mm. For the columns, these columns measures 0.15 by 0.30 and this one is 0.20 by 0.20. In your case, if you are using 0.30 by 0.30, therefore, you have to draw 3 mm by 3 mm boxes to represent the columns. And next is the outline of the roof. This line represents the outline of the roof, which is 1 meter away, or in the drawing, this is 1 centimeter away from the center of this roof beam and the column line. So from this point, you are going to measure 1 centimeter going here. So this is the first step of drafting the roof framing plan of your shed roof. So step two is to lay out the rafters. The first rafter from the left and from the right should be positioned on the roof beams. If you have offset exterior walls pointed by the arrows, and rafters should rest on them. Divide the space for the number of rafters. For accuracy, you may consult a civil engineer or architect for a safe design. It is used for a minimum of 115 or 1.5 meters and a maximum of 2 meters for the distances of the rafters for the purpose of this activity. This is it. This is the way you're going to lay out the rafters. We have eight rafters here. These rafters are drafted considering the offset shape of the plan. The first rafters drawn were the four rafters positioned above the roof beams where the offset walls are located. So these are the four rafters which were drawn first. The remaining rafters were drawn after dividing the spaces between the two rafters which were drawn initially. So, in this case, this rafter was drawn after dividing the space between these first two rafters which were drawn considering the alignment on the roof beam. The division of the space to add the rafters considered the minimum distance of 1.5 meters and the maximum distance of 2 meters. This is the preferred distance for this purpose only. When you need to construct your home later, consult the building authorities about your design. There are factors to be considered in the spacing, such as the strength of your materials, among others. In case that you have a regular shape plan, such as a square or rectangle, just get the distance of the first rafter from the last rafter and divide it by 2 
meters to get the number of rafters needed at a particular distance. For instance, the distance of the first and the last rafter is 12.85 as shown here. This 12.85 will be divided by 2 meters and it is equal to 6.84. It needs to have a whole number to get the number of raptors. So the number will be rounded up to 7. Next, 12.85 will be divided by 7 equals 1.84. Therefore, the distance between two raptors that will be used is 1.84 altogether. So this is the distance. Which means for all these raptors, the, di the distance between them is equal to 1.84 altogether. All in all, we have 8 raptors. So these are the raptors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So in this case, it's very easy because you will start only from the first rafter resting on the wall or shall we say roof beam and the last rafter also which is aligned to the roof beam and from this part to this portion or the first and the last this distance will be divided into a particular space just like two meters as we prefer to have and the number will be rounded up to a particular whole number just in case the answer is not a whole number and then that will be divided to the total distance to get the number of rafters and i mean to get the distance between rafters just like here we have 1.84 This is our step number three. We are going to lay out and draw the purlins considering these ideas below as stated in your supplementary learning materials. On step three, you're going to draft these blue lines here representing your purlins. These blue lines are the purlins being pointed by this laser point this measures 0.57 apart from each other. Considering the process stated in the previous slide. In your case, you can use this idea that the purlins to be drawn must start from this distance to here. Just add at least 0.5 mm for the space required for the flushing and other part of the roof framing system. Also in this part, you will adjust at least 0.5 mm from the outline of the roof. The same also with this. And the remaining space or distance will be divided equally into 0.60 as the minimum recommended size practiced here in the Philippines for the distance of the purlins. On the next slide, I'm going to provide to you the sample of projecting the purlins from the side view. So bear with me. Now I would like to show to you the illustration of projecting the purlins from the side view of the truss. So in this process, you're going to use the side view of the truss as the first hand drawing from which you're going to project the distances of the purlins to your actual drawing of the roof framing plan. Here in this case, I provided this label as the top view of the roof framing, which is your actual drawing. Here is the actual drawing to be drawn. For the framing of the shed roof but you are going to project the distance of the purlins from this position the height from rbl to apex line in this case is 2. in your case if you have 1.5 so make use of that height here 
and then from the upper part going down here yes you are going to use this part here you are going to draw the line until it reaches the outer part of the structure the length of the rafter from here going here at the uppermost part is 11.68 to find out for the number of purlins we need to divide this actual distance by 0.60. So in our case, what we did is to make use of a number less than 0.60, which is 0.57. So 0.57 is used to divide this length or the length of the raptor so as to have the locations or the mark out or the locations of the purlins. In this case, we also considered 0.5 mm here in the drawing or 5 centimeters in the actual setup of your purlins to be considered and also below here 0.5 down or from the, the tip or the lowermost part to the first purlin you must have a space of at least 2 inches to 0.5 centimeters or in the drawing you must have at least 0.5 mm it's the first location of the purlins below and the last location of the purlin above is the place which is 0.5 mm from the apex line okay so this is how you are going to project after dividing it equally you are going to project it this way from this point upward you're going to project this marking here that you marked out and also provide a marking here so that you will draw this construction lines for the position of your links in the actual roof framing plan. So these are now the yellow green line are the construction lines where you are going to draw your purlins. So there are so many purlins here. Alright, so this is the process of projecting the purlins from the side view of the truss to find out the accurate distances because you cannot have an accurate distance unless you'll have to do it this way. So for step number four, you're going to you're going to provide the labels, dimensioning system, and title. Labels include RB or roof beam, roof slope, purlins, and rafter. This is your title roof framing plan the dimensioning system are these dimensions the overall dimension and the detailed dimensions showing the distances between rafters and one here for the distance between the purlins and also with this side and also with the distance of the outline of the roof from the center of the roof beam or column. So these are the dimensioning system, labels, and title that you're going to provide as the last part of your drafting process.